ಗಂಗನಾಧಿಪತೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ದ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೂತ್ರಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಯ ಆಫ್ ದ ವೇದಾಂತ ಆರ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕಲ್ ನೋಟ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಟರ್ಮಿನಾಲಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಟರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಉಪನಿಷಾದ್ಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಪ್ ಟು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಥ್ರೂ ದೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ ಸೊ ಐಮ್ ಗೋನ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಮೈ ಸಮರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಾಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ everything else is just a detail <laughs> this is the world view of the vedas of vedanta and we find that if we live according to this world view we experience great happiness and bliss the problem is most of us have been conditioned by a different world view that is actually an inversion of values let me give you an idea what i'm talking about let's say i i want a thousand dollars so i can get a thousand dollar bill huh one thousand dollar bill and in one transaction i have it all or i could get two five hundred dollar bills <laughs> or ten hundreds all the way down to pennies huh now a penny is 100,000th of a thousand dollars so if i get all obsessed about pennies and start collecting pennies left and right it's going to take me a long time to get to $1000 probably i won't make it <laughs> because i'll get distracted by something else isn't it So in this situation the values are clear but in life they're not so clear and what happens is that people start chasing after pennies small change inconsequential things things that don't really matter and because of that they miss the real value they miss the thousand dollar bill brahman they miss the absolute they get caught up in the relative and then they wonder why they're not happy why are they suffering huh why do these things always happen to me <laughs> because you're chasing ephemera you're chasing things that will evaporate that are temporary impermanent so of course even if you get what you want it's not going to stay around for long it's going to change it's going to disappear and even when you get what you think you want you find out it's not perfect that's the problem that is the human condition we think we know what's going on we latch on to an idea or a desire we chase after it and then it lets us down again and again and again so <laughs> the vedas and especially vedanta give a different system of values let me illustrate this with a chart and i'm going to refer to this chart uh quite a bit in the rest of this uh episode in the beginning there is only self described as objectless awareness objectless awareness is different from consciousness it's like the possibility of consciousness or the precursor of consciousness but it has to be that way to be non-dual because there is only brahman one without a second 
there is no other object for Brahman to be conscious of. So, what is consciousness without an object? It's neither perception nor non-perception. And this, along with self-awareness, awareness of one's own existence, of one's own consciousness, is the quality of Brahman. So this quality exists within every one of us, within every sentient being. From the smallest up to the largest. That every sentient being is aware of its own existence and strives to prevent its death or destruction. Self-preservation, survival is the nature of Brahman. And the unlimited Brahman has unlimited survival, <laughs> unlimited awareness, unlimited knowledge, power, and so on. This is the highest value. And there cannot be any higher value than this, because this is the origin from which everything is derived. When we love, we should give our love to that which is most valuable. Doesn't that make sense? It's just like if we have all of our love, we should give it to one thing which is the most valuable, the most beautiful, most powerful, and so on. That's Brahman. But what do we do instead? We chase after material things. And because of that, we suffer. This is the inversion of values. Let me go through it in more detail. Brahman, the self, is non-dual. The first duality is when Brahman becomes consciousness and becomes Shiva Shakti. Shiva is the projector of this world, and Shakti is the projection, uh, the emanation, the creation. Shiva is the creator. This is on the beginning of duality, the first level of duality, yin and yang, male, female. Active, passive, subject and object. So on the subject side, you have all the beings. The beings are subjects because they are aware, they're conscious. And what are they composed of? Five koshas or shells. Those koshas are the Ananda Maya Kosha, Vijnana Maya Kosha, Mano Maya Kosha, Prana Maya Kosha, and Anna Maya Kosha. Anna Maya means food. Anna. And that's this material body, huh? the food body. Then there's Prana Maya, the energy body. Mano Maya, the mental body. Vijnana Maya, the intelligence. And finally, Ananda Maya which some people might call the soul. But really what it is, is that the individual consciousness is in touch with Brahman. So these five koshas correspond in the objective world with the five elements. First, the world is what? An object. And it's full of objects, all kinds of objects. And what are these objects? They are pradhan, which is the sum total of all material elements. And its components, akasha, which is space-time. Air, meaning all gaseous elements. Fire, meaning plasma. Water, liquids 
and earth, solids. So these five categories of matter are the material manifestation, the objects. Okay, And then we have the third element of the triple of beingness, that is consciousness. And our consciousness goes through a circadian rhythm from deep sleep, through dreaming, through so-called waking consciousness, which is actually just another kind of dream, a little more persistent, a little longer lasting. And round and round this cycle we go, once or even twice a day. Uh, and in the deep sleep, we are resting in the Ananda Maya. Our focus is on our bliss. In that stage, we have no gross body and there is no gross world. There is only space and time and nothing. And then in dreams, we go into the mental world, the mental body, the jnana maya, mano maya, where we experience all kinds of visions and all kinds of happenings that, well, aren't really true. <laughs> well, they're true on the level of dreams. But then we wake up, so-called. And which means we become aware of the anamaya kosha, and the pranamaya kosha. And in our so-called waking consciousness, we have all kinds of activities. But when that's finished, we go back to sleep, into our dreams, and deep sleep, without which we cannot survive. So this is our life. Huh? This is the scope or extent of our existence that we have these five sheaths composed of the five elements and we are pursuing these objects made of the elements in the world. And we're loving these objects. We're giving our attention, our time, our energy, thinking, planning, scheming, working, and so on to gain these objects. And because we're putting our love into these objects, which are not the self, we're suffering. And this existential suffering is due to exactly one thing. We have neglected to love the real self. Now, there's a whole bunch of self-help books going around that advocate self-love. But the self they're talking about is the false ego, the mind, the identity, the individuality, the duality. And because this duality fractures us into subject and object, it gives us a pain, a, a suffering that just does not go away. An itch that we cannot scratch. Well, we can, but there's only one way to do it. Let me go back to 2006. I was in Mexico, and every day I used to walk in a very nice park and garden area. And one day I was sitting there on the bench, just contemplating the wonder of consciousness. How amazing it is that we can be aware at all. In those days, I was thinking in terms dualistically, in terms of the soul and the world. Uh, but even so, isn't that just amazing that we can be aware of ourselves, aware of the body, aware of the world? And I began to feel extremely blissful, extremely happy from this contemplation. And at the time, I didn't understand why. But later on, I came to understand that it's because I was performing parabhakti. Parabhakti or uttama bhakti means the highest love, the highest love possible. 
The highest possible love is love of Brahman, and Brahman is pure awareness, the precondition for consciousness. Because Brahman exists, everything else can exist. Without Brahman, there's no chance of everything, because there's no consciousness. Consciousness depends on Brahman. Therefore, Brahman is senior to consciousness. Brahman is not conscious. Brahman is aware. But it has no object. So this self-awareness, which Ramana Maharshi calls I-I, is static. And because of that, we take it for granted. We discount it. We neglect it. It's left abandoned in some dusty corner of our minds. Way in the back with all the <laughs> dusty old memories. <laughs> and because of this, we miss the main chance for happiness in life, which is to love this Brahman. Because this is the highest value. This is the thousand dollar bill. Huh? This is the million dollar question. This is winning the lottery. This is it, baby. The main chance. And because we don't love Brahman, we miss it. Look, this is all theory and philosophy. Try something practical. Look inside yourself and find that which exists before consciousness. That ground of being, that potential for existence, that awareness of awareness, that static, self-aware being, I, I. And in the beginning, just praise it. Just appreciate how wonderful it is. Huh? Look, don't, don't try to make yourself feel something. Huh? Just do it. Just look inside yourself and find that static Brahman, huh? that pure awareness, and love it. Just try it. Just say, I love myself with a capital S. Not your petty ego, not your stupid mind, not your old rotting body, huh? but not even consciousness. Pure awareness without an object. It's there. Go look for it. You'll find it. It's in you. It is you. And when you love this Brahman, this self, you will experience the most ineffable bliss, the most unconditional happiness that you ever felt in your whole life. That's it. That's it, people. If you can get this, then you have realized Vedanta. Because once you are in touch with the self, all else will be added unto you. You don't have to endeavor for anything else. It will all come to you. Huh? Like I think it was Nisargadatta Maharaj said, as soon as you give up wants, the whole world comes and falls at your feet. And if the perfect love of Brahman is present in you, you will be so satisfied, you will have no other wants. And this is the key to full self-realization. Aung Tatsat. Aung Harihi Aung.